Stand your ground on Rivalry Week because we got a fight to the finish for the Battle Line Trophy. Arkansas travels to Columbia to take on Mizzou. Who comes out on top? And more importantly, who gets bragging rights for a full year? Welcome on into SEC Unfiltered. He's Dave Shoemate. I'm Cole Thompson, breaking down everything we will see at Faroat Field as the Hogs travel to Como to take on the Tigers. Real quickly, make sure that you like the video, hit that ring notification, and smash the subscribe button because this is your number one source for all things SEC moving forward. Download the podcast version of the show wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Follow us on the socials, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We're everywhere. We're going to be everywhere at SEC Unfiltered. Follow Dave at Mach 10 Sports, me at Mr. Cole Thompson, and check out all of our great work found at secunfiltered.com. This preview is brought to you by our friends over at Roback. The holiday season is right around the corner, ladies and gentlemen. And what better gift to give someone in your life than a Roback pullover, a Roback fleece, a Roback hoodie, a Roback pair of pants? And I'll tell you what, if you go get this deal now, use the promo code SECU, you'll get 20% off your first purchase. So the SEC Unfiltered family is kind of giving your family a little gift for the holiday season as well by simply going to Roback.com and using that promo code SECU. Dave, kick off set for 230 game is going to be on sec network mizzou a little bit of an underwhelming season we can all agree that this was a year with the schedule they maybe would fight their way into the college football playoff if they finished 10 and 2 but 9 and 3 is nothing to be ashamed of it is senior day they want to go out they want to improve they want to show guys like brady cook uh guys who have been around the program for years even guys that came in this past year to kind of stabilize this roster after an incredible 11 and 2 finish last season that they are still part of the MIZ family. But meanwhile, bowl eligibility has been clinched by Arkansas, yet how great would it feel to finish the season off 7-5, and five, gaining a little bit of momentum, seeing the progress and potential of Taylor Green by Petrino unloading the kitchen sink, and ultimately kind of telling Eli Drinkwitz to piss off for a couple months. Yeah, so, and throw this as another coach in. I mentioned in the preview, South Carolina, Missouri, Shane Beamer, not too fond of drink. Neither is Sam Pittman, but you're right, Cole. This is, this is a big one for uh, – Sam Pittman's back for sure. Yeah. Again, I see a lot of people asking if they were getting blown out Saturday against Missouri. How would that change? I don't think it does. I mean, it would leave a sour taste heading into the offseason. Like you said, 7-5, and five, you exceeded expectations tremendously. So I, I think that would be another big win for Sam Pittman and them. It's going to be an icy one, it looks like, Cole. And there could be anywhere from one to three inches of snow, it looks like, potentially the way it could go in here. It's going to be a freezing game. Um, how will that affect the passing attacks? I do think Missouri has a massive edge in the passing game against a very weak Arkansas secondary. So I'm sure drinking them will scheme that up. Again, I love the outside zone run scheme stuff they do. And let's be honest, I think the last two weeks, Missouri's been playing really well. They're kind of hitting their stride here at the end. You mentioned a little underwhelming this year. We've talked in the past, what game would they have maybe won without Brady Cook? But, again, they beat Oklahoma, so I don't, I don't really know. Again, I think they probably have the same record with Brady Cook. The Alabama game is probably a little closer. I think we could all say that. But I think 9-3, and three, if they can finish this off, win your bowl game, again, as much as people care about your bowl game. I think at a school like Missouri, Eli Drinkwitz, that'd be a back-to-back 11-10 and 10 win seasons. I mean – Things would still be definitely going in the right direction. You have to be fired up about the direction. So I still think there is a lot on the line for both these teams here. A lot of – you told me if we're only here, Cole – feeling good heading into the offseason. I feel like would kind of give you – it's kind of this – obviously you get the borderline trophy. but Battle line. Uh, sorry, battle line, rivalry trophy. Again, you forget it. We, I feel like we're in the Big Ten now in the SEC. And these teams <laughs> every game some battle trophy. But, no, I mean – I don't know. I think there, there is a lot on the line from a momentum standpoint, I would say. Again, Missouri's yeah. out of the playoffs, obviously Arkansas, but momentum is key here for both these teams. And obviously, Sam Pittman wants to beat Eli Drinkwitz for the first time in his career at Arkansas. Now, again, as a bandwagon Mizzou fan, I'm going to talk highly of my Tigers in this video. Guys, we got one more game, and then we got the final game, which is going to be the bowl matchup. You want to go 10-3. and three. Because I do feel like 10-3, and three, you are going to get some players to stick around for another year. You're going to once again be aggressive in the transfer portal to build off of the success, probably at least bring in another quarterback for competition purposes. And Eli Drinkwitz isn't going anywhere, even if he doesn't get a contract extension. You like the direction of this team. You brought this up, Dave. They've been playing extremely well over the last few weeks. Defensively, they only gave up 20 points to Mississippi State. They looked great at times, even though they gave up over uh, they gave up over 30 points to South Carolina. It was a four-quarter battle. We saw what the identity of this team was. They found success on the ground last week. 
Yes, they only averaged 3.9 yards per play, but they also had six explosive runs of 10 plus yards, three touchdowns for Marcus Carroll, a guy that I had a lot of hopes to be RB1. He and Nate Noel have done a good job being that thunder and lightning. And I think that in a game like this, you may have to trust your rushing attack. Arkansas has it too, which Quinn and Jackson, but I do like the fact that you have that bulldozing bruiser and Nate and Marcus Carroll to set up for the outside runs for Nate Noel against an Arkansas uh, defensive line that if they get susceptible to an offense being able to pull, they get an offensive line with Marcus Bryant, with Caden Green to be able to latch on, take them out of the play. You get to that second level. Tackling has been at times a question mark for Arkansas in the secondary. So this is a big game where, yes, you want to see Brady Cook find his rhythm with Marquise Johnson, with Theo Wees, with Luther Burden, probably the two of them in their last game out at Como. But still, you have a good ground game. If the offensive line can create opportunities for the backfield, they're going to be able to pile drive, I think, left and right once they get to the second level of the defense. Yeah, I think it'll depend on that weather. If it's sleeting a little bit, obviously that will affect the way both teams throw the football. And I, I'm sorry, I said Sam Pittman getting his first one. They won in 21. Totally forgot about that one. But he's one in three against Missouri. So obviously he still wants to turn the ship around in this rivalry against the head coach he's not too fond of. I mean, overall, for Missouri, Missouri is at their best when they get the stretch zone, the outside zone run game going with Nate Noel. He fits it perfectly. After he saw Cody Schrader make his money a lot last year, it's in – Eli Drinkwitz, Kirby Morris, DNA, that's when they're their best. And again, like I mentioned, I, I think Missouri the last two weeks has been playing their best football. And I think their best game of the year, like I said after it, I think was in a loss to South Carolina. They, they, I think they could have beat a lot of teams um, that day, but just were happened to play a really good South Carolina team that day as well. So I think Missouri's in a good spot. You, you like where they are. I think weather will be something to keep an eye on if you're betting the over-under in this game too. Just I, Again, you, I see some people, it's at the very least, right now it's telling me on Saturday looking at it, on Saturday, it says the high is going to be 31 in the low 16, baby. 60% chance of precipitation. It's looking like there's going to be a little sleet, guys. Nothing says SEC football like Midwest weather in early in, or in late November. But the thing that's going to be really important, I think, as well, is setting a tone through the year, however many drives that you do get, because of you are losing two key players this offseason along with Brady Cook. Luther Burden, according to Eli Drinkowitz, is planning on walking Saturday for senior day, even though he is a junior, which ultimately means he is probably going to the NFL draft. And, and Theo Wees Jr. as well is also going to be walking because of he is a fifth-year senior. I think that you want to get these two involved as much as possible. Let them go out on their own terms and their tenure out at Como with the ability to say, we were two of the better receivers that have been inside this building for the last several years. We laid down a foundation. I think for Brady Cook as well, you want to continue to show the fan base, I understand that we underwhelmed against Alabama. I understand that we underwhelmed against Texas A&M. If we had a few plays break early for us, we didn't have the uh, illegal formation on the offensive line with that Luther Burden score down in College Station, maybe we're talking about this season a bit differently. But I still think that even though it would be a souring moment for some of the fans, our people, our MIZ people would say, Hey, nine and three, we're still building in the right direction. If we can contain the success year in and year out, regardless of what the national media thinks about us, regardless of what people from the outside say about our scheduling or about our overall roster, if we had to play X person schedule, what would our record be? We know internally that we still have the right direction, but we also want to say thank you to these seniors, these guys that laid the foundation the last two years to get us to a point to where we will be in the conversation season in and season out as a legit contender. So pay respects to number three, number one, and number 12. If I'm number 12, I'm targeting number three and number one as much as humanly possible early on. Yeah, right. No, I agree. I'm going to lean on the run game if I'm an OC here. I don't know how much passing – I don't know how much you can really – pass in this particular weather oh, i think you gotta pass a lot in this game personally if you have if you have your strikes do so as much as you can well, i just don't know if you'll be able to you'd, you'd want to it's just if it's gonna be three inches of snow you're gonna be limited compared to what you were last year last week at star Wars. That's, that's what i'm saying and, and that would suck missouri if it is a snow game it definitely benefits arkansas in my opinion i think because that takes out probably missouri's biggest mismatch in the game potentially not completely it just depends what the footing is of that game but no, i think that's an interesting dynamic now looking at the weather of this game 
Arkansas is coming off a pretty decent win, 35-14 against Louisiana Tech at home. They're bowl eligible. They did rush for 5.8 yards per play, three touchdowns on the day. Taylor Green ran in for two. He also had two passing touchdowns. Rashad Dubian had a really good game, 7.5 yards per play. It feels like at this point, Arkansas has a good identity when it comes to what works for them consistently. The ground game to set up the pass. Yes, you are going to have the cardiac moments that are putting your heart on palpitations when Taylor Green is lining up back there. And every single time that ball hangs in the air for longer than two seconds, there is a 50-50 shot of you getting an interception and a turnover and thus a loss of down and causing a lot of criticism. But I do feel like that, again, we have seen at times this year, especially that Mizzou game, that was a perfect identity on how to win against Mizzou's defense. Corey Batoon, I don't think it's enough credit for how well he has transitioned from being South Alabama's defensive coordinator to Mizzou's defense coordinator this year. Outside of really, I would say, the Texas A&M game, they've played a pretty good brand of football. But in that Texas A&M game and in that South Carolina game, the rushing attack was bountiful, and it really was the difference for AM and South Carolina to get a win. I think with Jaquin and Jackson, I think with Dubion, I think that what you have also with Taylor Green, his mobility, if you can establish the run out in the field, that might benefit you more. And as you brought up, with the weather, again, if we have seen this year, Mizzou's front seven allow several big-time explosive plays to where the secondary can't get a stop unless it's 35 yards down the field. Yeah, Taylor Green being consistent. Like you, you saw, I saw somebody post that he just totally missed a wide open tight end up the same this past weekend. So we did real high and low at times. Arkansas's offense is going to have to be quick. I mean, I would have a hard time imagining Arkansas winning in a very low scoring game. I, I, I maybe, but I maybe I'm just wrong in thinking that. But I just don't see them winning a low scoring. I think if, if if Arkansas is going to win this game, the offense is going to have to be the storyline. I do think so. And I think probably helped with some defensive turnovers. And, and, and potentially with the weather here, who knows, snaps, uh, exchanges could be issues. So it'll be interesting to see what Bobby Petrino and them game plan is. Talking to some people at Arkansas, they think the wrong team's favored. They're pretty confident. Uh, I, I don't know if I would agree with that at this point because I do think Missouri is playing their best ball of the season so far. Going, I know one game was against Mississippi State. But once they had that turnover – once they forced that turnover for a touchdown um, from Carnell, the safety picked it up, ran it for a touchdown when you thought State could maybe hang in there for a minute. I mean, that, that, that just that was the whole game right there. Missouri never looked back. And like I mentioned, I, I loved the way they played against um, South Carolina two weeks ago. The one thing you have to look at is both these teams have a strength to their defenses. For Missouri, it's actually their pass defense. They are a great team when it comes to playing in coverage. They create turnovers. You just brought up. They got an interception last week. Uh, but then you look at – uh, when you look at right now, a team like uh, like Arkansas, they rank 27th nationally against the run. So if they're able to force Brady Cook to pass, that might end up being a detriment if there is any reason to believe that the passing game can be potent. But I do feel like that if you are Arkansas, you have to establish the run in this game because if you're not going to be able to win through the year, and more importantly, think about this again, Dave. Taylor Green is a roller coaster of emotions. When he is on point, I have been on record believing that he can be a top five passer in the SEC. No questions asked. He he has the arm strength. He has the mobility. He has everything that you want in terms of a full-fledged starting quarterback. But then when you have those constant mistakes and the ones that lead to turnovers, it becomes a problem. This is also a game that I really do believe that they're not going to go out into the portal and bring in another quarterback to take over for Taylor Green if he wants to be here next year. But I do think that they have to figure out what works and what doesn't? What do we have to build off this offseason if Green is going to be our starter? And do we have to bring in somebody at least for a contingency plan should he begin to struggle once more? Because again, you get a year. I'm not saying that if you go 7-5 and five, that, uh, that uh, vibes aren't good in Fayetteville. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is, is that eventually there is going to come a moment where fans may get tired of seeing 7-5 and five being the best that's possible and, and, and a quarterback that constantly is putting you in that situation where 7-5 and five is the only thing you can ask for. Yeah, I think Arkansas fans kind of just hit a stale point right now. I mean, you ask them what are expectations of um, of the program, and you kind of get it all over the place, anywhere from six to eight wins a year. I mean, you ask them how many times could they make a playoff in 10 years. I mean, you get answers of zero. I mean, which it's, it, 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 it's, it's kind of funny. You compare them and South Carolina fan bases, and it's like totally opposite ends of the spectrum. The program who has proven success in its history – 
is played in national championship games is the program. It's like, we'll never make the playoffs in 10 years. And you got a team that has had very limited success historically in South Carolina. It's like, we'll make it once every four years. It's like, so, so it's kind of funny. Arkansas, I think Arkansas fans would spend money in football if they got a guy they were fired up about. I think even sure. a seven and five, yay, we beat Missouri. But I think at the end of the day, if you ask 10 Arkansas fans, hey, is Sam Pittman the head coach in the next three or four years? Is he the future? They'd probably be, no, no. But I do think they have enough big alum people. They could go hire the right guy. I think Arkansas could go do something like Ole Miss does, like go get enough guys. They're going to always dabble in the portal. It just is what it is. Their goal should be to you know, try to get some of the better group of five players, ask them to come up from the Sun Belt. If I was the general manager, was over recruiting there. I think that's kind of where you could make your money, honey hole. High school recruiting kind of is what it is, limited resources in that state. There's not a lot of talent. But I think overall you're right. Like seven and five gets stale after a while. And do you want to be just that seven and five, eight and four program? At some point people get bored of that and want more, Either whether they should be wanting more or not. The, the, the crazy part is, is that Sam Pittman is going to be back next year, I think at this point, simply because of they're going to go to a bowl game. And if they finish 7-6 and six or they finish 8-5, and five, a lot of people will say, well, you overexceed expectations. The question is, does Pittman want to come back next year? He's going to undergo hip surgery. So far, it does feel like that the game hasn't passed him up. But if he were to leave in the offseason, what's going to be, I think, even more intriguing to me is who are some actual names that could be linked to the job? Because I personally think that Rhett Lashley, who has been the favorite, just got a contract extension down at SMU, he may look at University Park and believe, this is a much easier place for me to win. I'm going to get paid because it is a private institution. I can recruit the state of Texas, and there's going to be a lot of players that don't want to stay out of Alabama or Tennessee or North Carolina, and they're going to want to come back to the state. This is a great location for you to play at. I can have my resources bountiful. I can utilize the transfer portal, but more importantly, the NIL collective in my favor. Maybe this is a better job for me. And I'm not sure that there's many G5 programs that are saying, okay, I believe that Arkansas eight and four is going to get me paid, but is this a stepping stone job or do I view it as a legit place? I can win, win consistently, and more importantly, compete for a conference championship and as a college football playoff berth. Yeah, no, I, I agree. You got to figure out what they want to be. I don't think he's long term, but again, I think they overachieved this year to some extent. I mean, you could have sure. been Oklahoma State. You win this week. I mean, I'm giving you a solid B. Like, I think it's a solid season. You went seven and five. You had some injuries in the back end. Of course, the depth and the defense, like we said, all offseason was going to take its toll in November. I mean, it is with seven and five is a good year. I just think they need to go get some more juice to get the program excited to go get the big money people to start donating money so they can go invest in a 12 to $16 million roster. Dave, when you and I do these videos, we always talk about one player to watch. I will start off. Let's go with Arkansas. I think it's the Quinton Jackson. Personally, I, I do. I know that last week he wasn't the leading rusher, but still, when you think about this game, what works for them? It is the rushing attack. That is an area of weakness at times for Mizzou. They've had it multiple instances where one player, whether it be a Rocket Sanders, whether it be a Le'Veon Moss, whether it be Vanderbilt's, uh, Vanderbilt's running back and A.J. New Newberry, they've been able to break off for some big-time runs. They've been able to create separation, get to the second level of the defense, and get a fresh set of downs while running the time of possession, while owning the clock, while winning on third down. I think it's a Quinton Jackson, a big bruising type running back that is not afraid to tuck his shoulder and pile drive through. His injuries probably cost him a shot at going for 1,000 yards this year. I also think that he is still one of the more underappreciated players in the SEC. Let's see if he can end his tenure during the regular season out with a really big-time performance on the road. You're going to Quinton Jackson. Yeah. Um, for me, I guess this is kind of like a big Eric Gregory game. Cam Ball, somebody on the interior of the defensive line, I think is going to have to have a big game here we're looking back on. Again, I, I want to go – I think Taylor Green, obviously, he's the straw that serves the drink, good and bad. I mean, either he makes it taste really good or he makes it taste really bad, depending on how well he's playing. But I, I do think – I do think they're going to, have to stop the run. Again, I think Arsenal is going to, have to play really well on offense to win this game, but I do think someone on the interior of this offensive line is going to have to have a bigger game than we expected. Give me Eric Gregory. Landon Jackson does his thing every week. Again, one of the best hand combat defensive ends. Speaking of underrated players, it's him. He's just on a very average team. I'm going to go Eric Gregory, though. Big 5-0, 50. Redshirt senior. Last time he'll be playing against Missouri. I think you're going to see somebody, maybe a senior on either side of the football step up. I'm going to go with somebody random on the interior of the defensive tackle. Eric Gregory. This one's tough for me for Mizzou because there's a lot of ways that I can go. 
I feel like that the easy answer would be someone in the backfield. And so I will. I'm going to go with Jamal Roberts. And the reason why is because – complicated, of, Bear. Go with him, baby. It's Jamal Roberts. And the reason why is because of – you're going to probably lose two guys in the offseason, Marcus Carroll and Nate Noel. You, you probably are not going to have either one of them back. And so now you have to wonder, what does our rushing attack look like? Because I do think that Kirby Moore's offense is going to still be one of the more – intricate ones in college football next year it's going to benefit whoever is the starting quarterback it's going to benefit whoever are the wide receivers but i do think that part of the reason why it works so efficient in 2023 was because of the ground game headline by cody schrader and i wonder can jamal roberts be that guy in 2025 can he be the bell cow bruising back that wins with speed, wins with power, wins with his hand usage, wins in pass pro, is able to be that last man resort and create opportunities in the open field? If he can do that, even in a very limited role behind Nate Noel and behind Marcus Carroll, that's somebody that you say to yourself, okay, he is a foundation piece for the next regime of Tiger football. I want to see him have a very strong performance. I'm going to go Brett Norfleet. Uh, I think I just oh, I got one. Uh, I, I'm going to be, I think it's high discipline for Arkansas's defense is going to be key. I do like what Xavier Sori has done at the second level of the linebacker spot for Arkansas this year. He will be key in stopping Brent Norfleet. But if, it, if, the, if the weather is legit and you're going to be limited throwing through the air, you have to settle on the run game and probably the short intermediate game. And that's where the tight end Brent Norfleet comes in. So I think that's somebody can maybe get behind and in front of that second level of defenders, which are going to be key for Travis Williams' defense. I can see Brett Norfleet kind of having a big game when you factor in weather and really what Missouri wants to do is uh, throw off uh, yeah, throw off the run game there. Let's talk in some predictions. 2.30 kick on SEC Network for Rope Field. Saturday, minus three in favor of the Tigers. Over, under, set at 54. I'll go first. I think Arkansas at this point is glad they're going to a bowl game. I think Arkansas has had one of the more turbulent roller coaster esque seasons because there was a moment that we were viewing them as maybe a dark horse to actually compete for a college football playoff, maybe not an SEC title berth, but in a 12 team pitcher. If you get a win against LSU, if you get a win against Ole Miss, you get a win against Oklahoma State, you probably feel pretty good about the direction that you're going in because you did get the upset over Tennessee and you did beat Auburn. And so there's growth, there's development, there is sheer, I think, overall will that the program has turned the corner from the dark days of 2023. With that being said, there's something about playing on senior day for a roster with a guy that is unrelentingly his own authentic self, whether you like it or hate it, those players line up and they play for Eli Drinkwitz. They truly embody and envision who he is as an overall play, as an overall coach. They like his style. They like his brand. It doesn't matter what the rest of the media or what folks like us say about him. It matters that the buy-in is still there and the buy-in has been there. I think over the last three weeks, we have watched as Mizzou has kind of shown truly what they are as a program, not what they were at the start of the year. Unfortunately, it's a little, it's too little too late. They're relentless. I think they're going to be relentless at home. I love what the Tigers have done. I think if they want to end the year guaranteeing that there is a shot for 10 wins, even if it isn't a college football playoff berth, they want to finish inside the top 25 for a second consecutive season in both the AP and the college football playoff rankings. I think it's going to be really hard to do so with their schedule at nine and four. I don't think it will at 10 and three. I got the Tigers winning this one. Brady Cook balls out one final time. I do think that the passing attack is going to be there. I, I, I know it's going to be cold, but I think that Theo Wees and Luther Burden, they're going to want to add a little bit more stock onto their tape. I think that Brett Norfleet is going to get a touchdown. I got a three touchdown day from Brady Cook. I got the defense playing consistent throughout the first half. They give up a late touchdown to DeQuindon Jackson. I still am going to take the minus three. Give me Mizzou to win this one 34 to 20. I think that this is going to be a back and forth third quarter. And then you watch as probably Arkansas makes it a little bit too close for, I mean, I might uh, Mizzou makes it a little bit too close for comfort, but they find a way to pull out with a two touchdown score. Yeah. I mean, and you got to attack them to, to some extent because that's the weakness of the Arkansas defense. But no, I, I agree. I mean, pretty short and sweet on this one. I think our, Missouri's playing their best football of the season so far. I mean, it's taking them. 11, 12 weeks to get it going, factor in the Brady Cook injury. But, again, here they are, uh, as you mentioned, getting to 10 wins, winning a bowl game in a place like Mizzou is something you should take pride in, back-to-back -back, uh, potential 10-win seasons on a horizon, obviously 11. I'm just including back-to-back double-digit win seasons. I don't know. I, think, I just think Missouri is the better football team right now. I do think this will be close. Um, I'm going to go so like 24-20 Missouri here. I just think Missouri is the better football team. It's at home. You mentioned Brady Cook's last home game. 
I don't know. I, I, I definitely see a path to victory for Arkansas. I think they could come up with a good enough game plan. Taylor Green's shown he's played well enough. Um, I think some potential turnovers could be there at times for Arkansas. Arkansas could definitely win this football game. I don't know. I just think Missouri's playing their best football right now, and I have a hard time going against them in their last game of the regular season. With As you mentioned, they, for a program like Missouri where it isn't playoff or bust, they still have a lot to play for. Brady Cook's going to want to go out strong. I think they get a win here. I, I don't know. He's closer because of the weather a little bit, how cold it is. I'm going to go 24-20, though. I like where Missouri at, is at here um, hitting their stride at the end of the season. My MIC faithful, show up in droves. Be ready to bang the drums. Be ready to say thank you to all the seniors who were there. And for Arkansas, maybe pull off the upset. Start gaining a little bit of momentum going into the offseason. But let us know in the comments section, who do you think walks away with the win? Is it Missouri? Is it Arkansas? Is it too close for comfort with the weather being a factor at Faroe Field? Like, review, rate, subscribe. Make sure that you follow us on all the social channels, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at SEC Unfiltered. Download the podcast version of the show wherever you get your podcast listening systems. Follow Dave at Mach 10 Sports. Me and Mr. Cole Thompson, and check out all of our great work found at secunfiltered.com. For Jay Schumann, I am, I am Cole Thompson. MIZ, Arkansas. Just give us a good game. Peace.